Hello, I'm Father John Camus, and here we are at the Church of Saint Jean Baptiste. So today we're celebrating the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We're getting very near to the end of the church year, which is next Sunday when we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. So as we draw near to the end of our liturgical year, the readings today invite us to contemplate the end of the world and the second coming of the Lord. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call uh, to mind our sins and pray for true conversion of heart. Lord Jesus, you are the son of justice. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the everlasting sign of peace and reconciliation. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to salvation for the just. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, your justice is strong and your mercy is great. Protect us in the burdens and challenges of life. Shield our minds from the distortion of pride and enfold our desire with the beauty of truth. Help us to become more aware of your loving design so that we may more willingly give our lives in service to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So today I'm going to read uh, two readings. The first reading, which is from the uh, book of the prophet Malachi. And uh, I link that up to the gospel reading, which is once again taken from the gospel of Luke. And both of them have to do with the end of the world and the coming of the Son of Man. So here's the passage from the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will rise the sun of justice with its healing rays. So this begins with a threat and ends with a word of hope. And now the Gospel of Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, you see all this here the day will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. So then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be powerful earthquakes and famines and plagues from place to place and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead you to giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. 
You will be hated by all because of me. But not a hair of your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. So in the Judeo-Christian tradition, the end of the liturgical year becomes a metaphor for the end of the world as we know it. Our world with its violence, its greed and power lust, its injustice and its oppression will be exposed and judged and purified. We can clearly see this theme in the readings for this Sunday. <clears throat> In the, pack, in the passage from the prophet Malachi, we hear his prophecy of the day of universal judgment. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble. And on that day that is coming, we will set them on fire. And so the great purification is what he's talking about. He concludes his prophecy, however, with a word of hope. <clears throat> but for you who fear my name, there will arise the sun of justice with its healing rays. <clears throat> <clears throat> in the gospel passage, Jesus was teaching in the temple and overheard people commenting on the beauty and the opulence of the temple. He remarked, all that you see here, the days will come where there will not be a stone upon a stone so that all will be thrown down. Then he continued his teaching using language very similar to Malachi's. He cautioned his disciples not to be terrified when they hear of wars and insurrections because nations and kingdoms will inevitably rise up against each other. There would be powerful earthquakes and famines and plagues from place to place. There would even be mighty signs in the sky. In addition, another dynamic would be taking place as these events were unfolding. Jesus' disciples would be seized and imprisoned. They would even be handed over by friends and relatives. They would be hated because of their association with him. Some of them would be put to death, but this would not be the end of the world. Malachi's prophecy recognized the darkness of the world we live in, but it also looked to a world purified of injustice and oppression, of violence and war. We Christians, always hopeful, anticipate as John says in the book of Revelation, a new heaven and a new earth, a world in harmony with God, a new Eden. However, this world won't be forced on us. There won't be a great rapture during which bad people would be obliterated and good people would rise into the heavens. We Christians hold that the new world will come to life through our self-sacrifice, our living not for ourselves, but for others. This is the central teaching of Jesus. He modeled this teaching when he washed his disciples' feet. He modeled it when he took up the cross. He asked us to follow him, to do what he did, to live as he lived and to continue his mission. The new world will reveal itself gradually through the loving and sacrificial lives of people like you and me. People who take to heart what Jesus taught and modeled in his own life. In spite of the dismal condition of our world today, we can't lose hope. We must be devoted to the vision of a new world. We must, no matter what it costs us, live our lives for others.
Let's gather our prayers. So Jesus taught his disciples that even when they are persecuted, not a hair of their heads would be destroyed. So trusting in the Lord who protects the threatened and consoles the suffering, we call to mind the needs of our world. We pray for the church. May we be faithful to our mission to bring Christ to others as a sign of justice in times of persecution and hope in difficult and challenging times. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for leaders around the world. May they respond wisely to the Earth's climate challenge. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for each of us that the Holy Spirit may bless us with the strength and courage and wisdom necessary to help transform the present discord and hostility we are experiencing into peace and harmony and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for those who have been elected and re-elected throughout the country. May they serve the good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for pastors and ministers and missionaries and all people of faith. May they dedicate their lives to bring Christ's message of love and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Now let's pause for a moment, call to mind our intentions for today. Heavenly Father, lead us safely through our trials and tribulations as we work to bring your reign to the whole world. Listen to the prayers we offer to you and grant them according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And now we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all the church. Lord God, may the gifts we offer increase our love for you and bring us to eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With love, we celebrate his death. With living faith, we proclaim his resurrection. And with unwavering hope, we await his return in glory. Now, with all the saints and all the angels, we praise you forever. And we say, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise. 
gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. But this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So we pray the Lord's Prayer now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Lord, may we grow in love by the Eucharist we have celebrated in memory of the Lord Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
So the Mass is ended now. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. So next week, again, is the Feast of Christ the King. It's the last Sunday of our liturgical year. We're preparing already for Advent the following week. So I hope um, you start thinking about coming back to church, joining the community in the celebration of the new year as we celebrate Christ the King. Have a good day.